So our gratitude goes to Barry Weiss uh, for exposing this. Barry Weiss is not a conservative. She was with the New York Times, and uh, she had to leave there because she was starting to come under attack. And she has, she's liberal. She's liberal. And so she has been speaking out against the insanity that the left now has embraced. Um, Pat, I know you you uh, saw this this weekend as well, so I'd love your comments. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play uh, I'm going to play some cuts here from uh, this lecture. This is from a, a a psychiatrist and psychoanalyst out of New York City. She's speaking at the Yale School of Medicine. Now, <laughs> uh, why is this a problem? Well, if you if you have time today, just look up the T4 program. Uh, I think it's T4. Is it T4 or T2, uh, Pat? Could you look that up? Um, it is the the beginning of the extermination camps in Germany. You see, those weren't started by guys in black uniforms. They were the exact opposite. All of that, all of the Holocaust, it all started with people in white uniforms and scrubs. They were the doctors and the nurses. And already the AMA has said they're putting critical race theory into the medical profession. The guy who used to be the chief editor of uh, the journal of uh, AMA has been fired. He's been there for years. Sorry, he hasn't been fired. He retired after he spoke out and said, we can't put this into the medical field. You can't inject politics and you can't inject CRT. He then suddenly decided to retire on his own. This is, this is uh, now being exposed, thank goodness, by Barry Weiss. And uh, this is only the beginning of this if we don't all stand up. Here she is giving a lecture on the psych, uh, psychopathic problem of the white mind. I'm going to play these in reverse, please, for uh, engineering on television. Let's play cut, uh, what is it, five, please. We need to remember that directly talking about race to white people is useless because we're at the wrong level of conversation. Addressing racism is things that white people can see and process what we are talking about. They can't. That's why they sound demented. They don't even know they have a mask on. White people think it's their actual face. We need to get to know the mask. Black rage has nothing to do with black people and everything to do with white people. Okay. All right. So talking to white people. See, her whole idea here is that white people are literally out of their minds. And so like CRT, there's no redemption. You can't save them because they're so far gone. They are, racism is part of who they are, that why talk to them? Now, I I want you to understand, if you think someone is too far gone, that you can't even talk to them, and they are the biggest threat to your life, what options are left for you? Can you coexist? Can you coexist with someone who wants you dead? Can you coexist with somebody who wants you to be their slave? Can you coexist and have a neighbor that is psychotic and doesn't even know it and is working against you and your race 24 7? If I can't talk to them, if there is no saving them, then I either have to put them in a camp or chain them up or kill them. Cut four. So white people are out of their minds and they have been for a long time. So we're not in a psychological predicament because white people feel that we are blaming them when we bring up race. They feel that we should be thanking them for all that they have done for us. They are confused, and so are we. Can you hear me okay? Yes? Okay. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. We are asked 
asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they're a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. It ain't going to happen. They have five holes in their brain. It's like banging your head against a brick wall, just like sort of not a good idea. Let me, let, me, let me restate again exactly what she said verbatim. We are now in a psychological predicament because white people feel that we are bullying them when we bring up race. They feel that we should be thanking them for all that we have done, uh, all that they have done for us. I don't feel that way. Pat, do you know anyone that feels I, that way? No. I've never seen it. I've never heard it. No. I have you know who you know who probably does feel that way the people in the white house who are mm-hmm. saying that right. uh, black people can't get an accountant uh they can't get a lawyer so those people probably do think that they should be thanked for all that they are doing because they're saying that black people can't do it on their own That's not a conservative. That's not a constitutionalist. That's not the Americans that I know. Okay. Said they are, she she went on. She said they are confused, meaning white people. And so are we. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they are a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. Now, let me flip this around. I know there are a lot of people that think, how are we going to deal with these Marxists? Because they'll never change their mind. How are you going to deal with Antifa? Well, Antifa, if they won't change their mind, if they won't come and see the light of what their violence really is and what they're advocating for, there's there's only really one thing you can do, and that is put them in prison uh, because they're breaking the law. But if they're demented and a violent predator who think they are a saint or a superhero and they won't accept responsibility, they have to go to jail or worse. That's what she's saying about all white people. She said it ain't going to happen. Because they have five holes in their brain. It's like banging your head against a brick wall. It's just sort of like not a good idea. Next cut, please. Why are white people so confused by black rage? More importantly, why do white people have so little empathy towards black rage? In 1846, Chappelle begged white women to just shut up. White women cannot stop talking for longer than five minutes because they think that they are here to teach us about white privilege. And I saw the same type of thinking in all white people in the institutions I was at. But now I got some tools. So let's just say I got a roadmap to the white mind. Are you out of your mind if you can't see that? Uh, You know, all I keep thinking Mm. is... um, what you believe, so shall it be. So whatever it is that you believe, uh, she believes that she is surrounded by by lunatics, that all whites are lunatics and they're everywhere. Of course, that's exactly what she'll find because she won't have a reasonable conversation with anyone. Cut to, please. Around five years ago, I took some action. I systemically, systematically, now I'm going to do, white groups did, most of my white friends, and I got rid of a couple white BIPOCs that snuck in my throat, too. I stopped watching the news. Once I started, I couldn't stop. I had less than 1% left. It was also public service. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, daring their body and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away relatively gentlet. With a bounce in my step, like I did the world of f- paper. Okay, so there's two things she's saying here. The first, she said in real life, she's gotten rid of all of her white friends. She's gotten rid of all of her white friends. So now uh, you are completely isolated. You're not, <clears throat> you're isolating yourself. You're not allowing yourself uh, to experience anything different. You know you know who did this? Uh, the Nazis did this. The Nazis isolated themselves from Jews. 
Do you know the number one reason why people saved Jews in Germany? What they said verbatim? Yes, Jews are bad, but I know this one, and this one isn't bad. They had so isolated themselves that they had felt that all Jews were bad, except the one they knew. So if you're taking people and you're saying, I'm getting rid of all of my white friends, can you imagine if you said, I'm getting rid of all my black friends? First of all, you'd be a Klan member. This woman is saying, get rid of all of my uh, white friends. She's part of the white Klan. She's part of this this uh, uh the clan that is against white people. There is no difference between the the ideolo- uh, ideology. There's no difference between what they are advocating. So she's saying, I'm getting rid of my white friends. But then she says, I fantasized. Now, she's a psychoanalyst. So when you're fantasizing about something, there's a deeper meaning behind this. There is something psychologically wrong with you. If we had somebody in school that was writing a paper about how he fantasized on killing all of the kids in his school, we would have him banned from school and he would be in an institution. Am I wrong on that, Pat? Any doubt? No doubt at all. No doubt. If I said on the air I have a fantasy of killing X, Y, or Z, and... And it was part of my rhetoric because these people are so dangerous, whoever these people are. These people are so dangerous. They're insane. They have to be stopped. There's no dealing with them. I have this fantasy. I would lose my job, rightfully so. She said she has a fantasy where she unloads a revolver into the head of any white person that got in her way, then burying them, wiping off her hands with a bounce in her step because she had done the uh, people of the world a favor. Again, this is a lecture from the Yale School of Medicine, the Child Psychology Department. One more clip, and then I'm going to break. White people's expectation is that we need to take their attacks with gratitude and apologize for our anger, and not we're overly sensitive and crazy. Our rage is the real problem. Except nothing makes me angrier than a white person who tells me to not be angry because they have not seen real anger yet. I did this for years in a psychoanalysis, where every time I got angry around race, this white called me psychotic. She told me that the problem was that I was, quote, too smart, and that I either had to be psychic or psychotic. Her interpretations had nothing to do with me. Psychoanalysis was used on, as a weapon on me to have aspects of her mind, a projection which I'll unpack. She attacked me through racist interpretations and then made my anger, quote, the problem. I spent years unpacking her racism to her while she charged me cash money for years. And then she'd attempt to, quote, teach me because she had concern about my anger. I couldn't get her to shut the f- up. This is the cost of talking to white people at all. The cost of your own life is they stuff you dry. There are no good apples out there. White people make my blood boil. So there's a couple of things that we have to do. Um, and one of them is not be enraged. And I know it's really hard. Um, you know, you have nobody is talking about. Uh, the the meeting on Black Wall Street that happened last week where one of the speakers, uh, in fact, several of the speakers uh, echoed these, but we must fight on every front to achieve, redre- uh, to achieve redress and reparations and the atrocities committed upon the Tulsa massacre descendants. We must intensify the fight to re- uh, for repar- reparations for 40 million blacks still affected by racism, inequality, wealth disparity, police brutality, and the like. Um, uh, it is time for us to kill everything white in sight. We are pushing death to white supremacy, death to capitalism, death to imperialism, death to fascism. 
We're pushing for an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a head for a head, and a life for a life. Okay. Um, nobody's talking about that. That happened last week. It's white supremacy that is the biggest uh, threat to America. You know that not to be true. First thing you have to do is not be enraged by it because anger. Give me Yoda, Pat, will you? On anger. Oof. He's so uh, clear. Anger. Anger leads to fear. fear. No. Anger <laughs> no, leads wait. to hate. Hate leads to fear. Fear leads to no. suffering or something no, to that fear. effect. No, fear. fear leads to anger. Yeah, so start there. Fear. <laughs> fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Mm? Suffering. Yes. 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 Okay. No. So. Yes. <laughs> Um, So we cannot be angry, um, (laughs) but we have to take a stand. And I'm I'm going to begin to lay this out for you in the next 60 minutes on how to take a stand and what we must do.